Hello YouTube, I am Lightly Salted and welcome to the channel. In our continuing U-Boat series, we are hunting down this particular Empire ship. We are getting a little too close for comfort. I'm going to be cranking in reverse here, slow us down. And we're going to uh, adjust our heading just a bit so we don't actually collide with her. So, in our last episode, we had managed to torpedo two ships out of a three-ship convoy. Uh, and we're going to chase this last target down with the deck gun, Mr. Hagenow. Uh, could I have you on the deck gun, please, with some help? Let's see here. Mr. Watcher. Mr. Watcher, if I could get you to recharge the compressors, please. Um, what I'd like to do uh, at this time is uh, explain a little bit more about the weapons mechanics in the game. Uh, the deck gun and the flat gun specifically. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have our skipper jump on the flak gun. Uh, this is primarily used for anti-aircraft, however it can be used against ships. And what I plan to do is just up here in the top left of the screen, I plan on having the skipper automatically target ships. So we're just going to hit this icon. And uh, he is... the intent is... He's supposed to be firing at this enemy ship. He is firing at nothing. Um, he's firing at the wreckage, I believe, of other ships. I, I honestly don't know how the mechanic works. All I can tell you, as a matter of fact, is you do not want to use these automatic targeting systems. They are atrocious. They're not actually too bad with aircraft, for whatever reason, but for ships, they're, they're pretty broken. So I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't use them. I would always have them selected off and do all of your firing in uh, manual mode. Uh, Mr. Hagnow is on the deck gun. Let's uh, adjust our course and speed a little bit to make this a little easier on ourselves. And we'll start pumping some AP rounds, hopefully along the waterline of our final Empire class crater. Right about there. It's a little high, I think. Later on, when you're able to unlock the ability to give officers a uh, third helper, uh, I highly suggest you do that with, with the officer you put on your deck gun. It's going to make reloading much, much faster. I've often found that 90% of the shots I want to take, I cannot take because they are still reloading. Um, when you're at a distance like this, you may want to consider swapping to HE and pumping rounds along the structures on the deck in the hopes to set her ablaze. You can also attempt to do this using HE rounds with the flak gun. And there you go. HE rounds. Just keep pumping them into the superstructure of the ship. And with any luck, you'll end up with a fire. Mr. Hagnow, let's keep working on those AP rounds, please. We are running fairly low on those, unfortunately. I've often found with the Empire class, um, you want to be aiming for the nose area. They seem to... Ah, uh, that's a glitch there. You'll see the smoke plume in the distance. Occasionally, the graphics glitch out a little bit on you, and ha you, you could actually even see fire appear <laughs> in front of the bow of the ship you're attacking. Um, like I was saying, uh, the, the bow of uh, these particular Empire-class freighters uh, tend to take them down fairly quickly and easily. They more or less drive themselves underwater. So yeah, just a quick pointer on, on this particular class. She's beginning to list fairly badly. I wouldn't think it's going to take too much more to put her under. Uh, she does not appear to be abandoned yet. I don't see any lifeboats in the water. So we'll adjust course slightly and uh, pop a few more holes in the hull. You may run into it from time to time. Uh, a ship that just refuses to sink. I pulled up her life bar here. And uh, unfortunately, that little bit of green is not going to go away without some help. So we'll uh, lob another couple of rounds at her. We'll uh, get through some of this HE. I think that's got her. Ooh, ah, the ship is sinking. Excellent. What I plan to do now is pilot our ship into the wreckage. Uh, with the hopes of picking up some illicit goods amongst the wreckage. 
if you're just getting started in the game, um, your your resources are fairly finite. It is possible that when you sink an enemy vessel, you will find you will find uh, that they've dropped uh, goods. Realistically, I've never found anything more than a few bits of food here and there, but uh, a little bit goes a long way. So uh, let's give that a shot. Mr. Hagnow, if you could center the gun for me, please. And we'll have you begin navigating again for us. As our navigation is now at zero. And unfortunately, there's nothing to be gained from, uh, from this particular wreckage. We don't seem to have the ability to uh, to get a hold of any of these these items. These here would be your lifeboats. And no, unfortunately, there's nothing here for us. You could do this in first-person mode by actually having a member walk out on the nose of the uh, bow and selecting things uh, directly. Or you can go ahead and make your selection down here and use the uh, right-click function. We do require to radio this back to HQ. Um, but before we get into that... I'm going to try to uh, to alter things for us a little bit and uh, hopefully give you guys an idea of how weather can affect your, your ship and radio. So uh, why don't I go ahead and set up some bad weather for you and I'll see you in a moment. All right, and as you can see here, we're, uh, we're in the thick of it. So let's go ahead and get uh, Mr. Osterman on the radio for us and try to uh, try to phone in our kills. And we've got the indication here that we are out of range. Uh, I know I've spoken in, a, in an earlier episode that uh, this is a, a bug that occasionally shows up. However, with the weather being as it is, we are simply not able to make contact with HQ. If I go ahead and give him a helper, we can't even pick up any radio stations uh, at the distance we're at from land and given the weather conditions. That's a good indication of how weather uh, is going to affect your ability to, uh, to perform your duties. I'm going to go ahead and return us to the calm, easy night we had to begin with, and I'll see you in a moment. And here we are. We've, uh, we've settled down the storm, and now we have the ability to radio in for our additional 6,000 budgets. Thank you, radio. Why don't you get yourself down? You don't need a helper to sleep. And like I spoke about in the preceding video, we're going to head off and uh, try to unlock this checklist. This is also going to help us uh, fulfill our requirements for the 2250 kilometers traveled. So I'll motor on up that way, and I'll see you shortly. Okay, checkpoint unlocked. Now if we check our map, we can see that this green icon has been lit up for us. So in future endeavors heading out to sector BD, we could simply right click the icon and fast travel to it. A uh, quick note on fast travel, currently in build 126, fast travel costs nothing. It costs neither time, food, fuel, nothing. Uh, it will give you a warning that fast traveling will cost you say, for the sake of argument, six days, um, X kilograms worth of food, and X liters of diesel. However, currently that function has not been built into the game. So just something to know. Getting ourselves back towards the Bay of Biscay should eat up the rest of our mileage. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We'll increase speed. I'll start steering the ship home, and I'll check back with you if anything comes up. We've managed to complete our patrol. We have traveled the full 2250. So the game is going to remind us to send that, uh, send that report back to HQ. As an aside, I wanted to give everybody a quick note on manning your stations. As you unlock more officers for your ship to a maximum of seven, what you'll find is it becomes a little more difficult in juggling who is doing what in the fact that there are only so many beds available. Uh, you may run into the fact that someone is very, very tired, or rather very fatigued, and they can't be sent to bed because there's just simply simply nowhere for them to sleep currently. It's just something to keep in mind. Uh, we'll continue on on the uh, journey home, and I'll check in with you if anything comes up. 
So the return home trip took about uh, roughly four days in game time. Uh, it was uneventful, nothing came up. As you can see, we're nearing the lighthouse of La Rochelle. I'll go over to taking her into her berth, uh, as it's a little, a little counterintuitive currently in this build. And uh, yeah, let's get us tied up. A quick note, the time compression close to shore does make it a bit tedious uh, getting into port, much like uh, leaving port was. Um, currently, it is what it is, and uh, there's no real way around it. All right, so a quick note on getting back to dock. You must place your U-boat where it came from. So these lights here on the dock denote where we began our journey. Um, here's your storehouse. This is where your leading officer hangs out, recruitment officer, so forth. What you've got to do is get your ship to this spot. Uh, you can't park on this side. Um, you can't pull into either to any of these berths. And this is going to be fairly across the board. As you progress through the game and head to different ports, uh, your berthing area will be lit up for you. It'll let you know where your boat needs to go. You could steer into it manually, of course, by using the, uh, the rudder tool up here and steer yourself in. Um, the easiest way that I found is to just pilot a course in, noting that your U-boat has the turning radius of a jet airliner, essentially. It's, it's a very, very large turning circle, so you're going to want to pay attention to that. So we'll steer out this way, put in a waypoint, and a waypoint, and a waypoint, and a waypoint, and we'll get her right alongside. And as you can see here, I'm just aiming the boat roughly at the dock, and uh, automatic will take over here in a moment. And there you go. We've managed to dock the boat. Uh, believe it or not, my first playthrough of this game, not knowing anything about it and uh, not being um, savvy enough to look up tutorials on YouTube, uh, I tried everything I could think of to try to get this thing to dock, and I just couldn't figure it out. And it turns out it's just as simple as aiming your boat at the dock and... Uh, letting your higher power take the wheel. All right, Skipper, why don't we go ahead and talk to the leading officer and let him know we have, uh, we've made it home. We have spent 13 days and 20 hours at sea, so I'd imagine the crew is getting fairly restless. Sir. Deeply impressed by your last patrol, a solid work, Captain. Okay, so our Skipper has received a decoration, the Iron Cross Second Class. The uh, window here will give you a quick blurb about the, the tradition and the history of that particular medal. Go ahead and click Next. Klaus Hagnow, our second-in-command, gained points towards his next decoration, so he hasn't actually achieved a medal, but he's gained points. He gained those points through contribution in sinking the Empire Linden freighter, so that would be the freighter we shot down with the deck gun and helping to determine torpedo course at Empire Lad Freighter, and that's when I let the game take over to do that calculation. Next. Mr. Oldorp receives a new decoration. Iron Cross Second Class. He got this for having mined our lost ship, uh, U-1273, which didn't actually happen because we didn't mine it. This is a little bit of a bug in the game. Uh, he did, however, get points towards uh, visited drifting U-boat, U-1237, U-1273. As you recall, we ended up sinking her with a deck gun, so this is a bugged out portion of the game. It just assumes you would have done mining, I, I guess. Um, I can't really speak to the, uh, the programming. And next. Skipper receives a new decoration, again, Iron Cross second class. He also receives the Iron Cross first class. And he gains uh, 49 of 80 towards the German Cross in gold for the sinking of the Empire Linden, contribution in sinking of the Empire Linden, sinking of the Empire Leonard, and he determined the torpedo course uh, for the Empire Leonard, the sinking of the Empire Low, determined torpedo course at the Empire Low, investigated the drifting U-boat U-1273, sinking of the Empire Lad, and determining torpedo course of Empire Lad Freighter. Your skipper will gain much, much more experience than the rest of your crew because, of course, everything they do is under his command, so he, he, gets, he gets special points for that. Mission summary. So we made 30,000 budgets during our patrol. We gained an additional 66% reputation. Tonnage sunk, 19,265 tons. 
13 days, 20 hours, travel distance 7,536 kilometers. Uh, it will give you here a list of all the ships you managed to sink along with their, their tonnage. Uh, it gives you a list of the objectives you completed. So we actually overshot our tonnage by a fair bit, sinking 19,000 and change as compared to the 7,000 that was required. Next. So here you have the opportunity to get some more orders right away, getting your crew a break, so on and so forth. My personal recommendation is you say goodbye and take stock. You can see here that our officers gained 130 experience apiece for their various tasks. Now myself, personally, what I like to do is kit out my boat right away, so it's something that I don't find myself having forgotten at the beginning of my next patrol. So we're going to go ahead and get the skipper to head over to the warehouse for us. And show me what you've got, please. Alright, I like to begin with fuel. Uh, unfortunately, I have from time to time left the dock, not realizing that I've forgotten to fuel up. Go ahead and fill this bar and refuel, please. My next priority is often torpedoes. We pretty much shot everything. We have a few, I believe we still have the five in the torpedo tubes. However, we, uh, we got rid of all of our excess. I recommend sticking with T1s at this portion of the game. It's unlikely you're going to be doing much tangling with warships, given the average missions they tend to throw your way. Uh, T2s are fine. Go ahead and try them out if you'd like. I prefer the uh, the much reduced dudding chance early on in the game. So we're going to go ahead and restock the boat with T1s. I'm just going to right click. That's all the T1s we can pick up at the moment. So we're going to have to supplement with some T2s. Uh, note on that, I could simply shut this all down now. I, I don't. I didn't need to load the T2s. I could have had them load the boat. And by the time they were done loading our boat, stores, the warehouse, would have uh, would have stocked more of the T1s. Another quick note on the torpedo types. If you take a torpedo from a certain slot, so this T1, this T2, so on and so forth, the game will replenish those slots. So it will replenish two T2s here, a T1 here, a T1 here, and so on. So if you're looking to just get one particular type of torpedo, you could have to be revisit the warehouse over and over. We require a little more firepower in the stern. We'll take another T2. After that, I like to move on to ammunition. I know, I know, we uh, fired an awful lot of shots during that campaign. Uh, I'd like armor piercing, please, as many as I can take. Black gun. We ended up using a few just for demonstration purposes. I think we'll take a little more HE, say roughly the tune of 200 HE. It's fine. And I'm going to go ahead and fill the rest of our space up with uh, armor piercing ammunition. Excellent against ships. We've maxed out the flat gun. That gun's maxed out. Now food. You'll recall when we started the uh, the game, we only had 6,000 budget, and things were pretty tight. With one short mission down, uh, I'm still at 46,000 after having pretty much filled my boat to the brim. So again, just getting that one first mission down, uh, pick a short one, pick something that you can sink two or three ships and uh, get yourself back home, and you'll be off and running to the races for your next patrol. So we'll go ahead and restock on food. I'm going to move some stuff around here just because I like it to uh, be in a certain configuration. Grab some cheese. More fruit is always a good thing. Fruit and vegetable. Always, always, always get fruit and vegetable when you can. They come in handy for particular missions. Some bread. We'll stock up our steak. And we might as well take some sausage. These two positions I tend to use for equipment. Um, I could take spares of uh, the spare parts or some first aid kits. However, I know that my engineer and my mechanic both have five each. I'm not too concerned about that just now. Um, you can go ahead and take as much extra equipment as you want, of course. It's completely up to you. I think I'm good on the ten. However, I know that my medic only has the five med kits on him. So I'm going to go ahead and take five more. You always want to take more coffee. Always more coffee. Coffee comes in handy so many times during um, during my missions. So we're going to go ahead and get uh, four slots worth since we have the budget to burn. That should do. Goodbye. And we get here the icon that, uh, that our boat is off duty for five days. It's going to take that long to get the torpedoes and stores into the boat. I'm going to go ahead and uh, let that time compress. Okay, we've loaded the boat. This is what I'd normally be taking care of upgrades to my ship 
and uh, promotions, uh, special favors from HQ. However, we still do not have any of those reputation points. We have nothing to spend at our leading officer here. So that's out of the question for now. I think what I will do though is go over a little bit of the research aspect. So we'll go ahead and jump into the headquarters here. And we'll bring up the same screen we saw before. And during my plays, I like to start off with researching accumulators one. This will uh, greatly increase your battery capacity. Um, so if we click on that, we see that it requires an engineer and it's gonna take 12 days to complete. So we need a spare engineer. So what we're gonna do is leave this screen. Leave this screen. We're gonna go to management. Now this can also be done at the recruitment officer here, but this is just easier. And Mr. Watcher is a mechanic type. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove him from the boat just by clicking this check mark. We'll get back into headquarters. We'll select accumulators one, select the empty space. And we can see here that we have one engineer type who is available. So we're gonna go ahead and click select. Perfect, he fulfills the requirements. Time to complete 12 days, we'll go ahead and accept that. Now you have a few options here. You could put out to sea for another patrol um, and hope to burn up those 12 days. I've seen people cheat the system a bit, sell all their torpedoes, unload the ones in the tubes, buy all new torpedoes, wait for time compression, so on. Uh, I mean, if you want to play that way, that's cool. Uh, it's your game. Um, my personal preference, and the reason why we only briefly spoke to the leading officer, is we have the ability to go on vacation. I touched on it in uh, one of our earlier episodes. Vacations last for 14 days. So while my crew is on vacation and our U-boat is safely tied up at the dock, Mr. Watcher is going to be able to cover off the research that we've asked him to do. We'll be ready for upgrades right away. So we'll select my crew needs a break. And we have many, many options here. Um, early on, it, it, there's nothing wrong with just taking the free one just here. Uh, this is La Rochelle. You will basically go on furlough here in port. It costs zero budget. Uh, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, moving forward, we have the French campsite. Discipline penalties will be reset and discipline will be at plus five for 10 days. This is an extremely powerful one, as discipline is one of the hardest uh, mechanics in the game to manage, especially if you plan on heading off to a dangerous sector. This would cost uh, 1500. The Bavarian village, when it says discipline penalties will be reset, that means that any of your penalties from fatigue, so if we'd been on, say, a longer patrol and our fatigue was creeping up, we could have a minus four multiplier on our discipline already. So this would reset that, and as with this and this. This would also give you that the crew's energy is depleted 50% slower for 10 days. And having time to think, you're having time to think, rather, your crew gains 25% extra experience from the last patrol. So we would gain for free extra experience on our officers and, and might be able to even, uh, even give them some new skills right away. So that's definitely something to consider depending on how much experience you had just gotten previously, you, you could be looking at quite a dividend. My personal favorite is the French Chateau. Uh, you get that extra discipline for 10 days, and having had time to think, you get the 25% extra experience. This one is my go-to, um, and this is the reason why the last thing I tend to do is taking the vacation, because I want to maximize those 10 days. I don't want to be spending two, three days at dock resupplying the boat, so uh, if you can take your vacation just before you head back to sea, that's when you can maximize the dividends for it. German Alps, 25% extra experience. And due to contact with politicians in the area, headquarter tasks will be performed 100% faster. This would come in handy if you were deciding to do some research that was uh, ahead of your timeline. So one of the ones with the warning icon on them, that's going to take 24, 40 days, so on and so forth. You could go ahead and pick German Alps and uh, get that research done in half the time. The Eagle's Nest, a lot of people tend to lean toward it. I'm not particularly sure why. Uh, you do get the plus five discipline for the 10 days and the 100% faster headquarter research. Uh, however, I've just found that that doesn't pay out ordinarily for myself. So I'm going to go ahead and select the French Chateau since I know we have a fair amount of budget to get through just yet. And we'll select that. 
So what I'm going to do is just hit the icon to compress the time for the 14 days, and I'll see you in a moment. Okay, it's went and stopped us at day 12, and that's because we were performing research that took 12 days. So we can go ahead and click the beaker icon here, which uh, if you mouse over it says that the task was completed, visit headquarters to receive rewards. Here you have to select in the white, for whatever reason you can't click the picture, I'm not sure why, you select the white here. Research has been completed, visit port if you would like to refit your U-boat. I'm going to go ahead and accept. Fantastic. Now the very first thing you want to do is put that officer back on your ship. Um, very, very common mistake to forget to do that, take off, and you realize you're missing one of your officers. I'm going to go ahead and open up the management tab and place Mr. Watcher back on board for us. We are back up to 5 of 5 strength with our officers. And we still have 15 hours worth of off-duty time. So I'm going to keep maximizing the bonuses that I got from the vacation. And I'm going to have Mr. Graf speak to the warehouse now. And we're going to upgrade our ship. So we'll select option 2. And we know it was accumulators. So the icon for upgrading the accumulators is just here. Electric engine. Click that. And as you can see, we have the ability to perform accumulators 1. Accumulators 2 is currently locked. It will become unlocked when we have the research completed. We have 39,000 budget, so the 8,000 it's going to cost is nothing to us. And we'll get that extra 25% capacity. So we'll go ahead and buy. And it's going to take one day, 20 hours, and 26 minutes in-game time to complete the upgrade. We'll go ahead and close this. Say goodbye to our storesman. So, we've still got our time compression here. Once I click this, we're going to complete the end of our vacation, and we're going to be completing the upgrades to our ship at the same time. Perfect. Mr. Hag now has leveled up from our vacation. So we're going to go ahead and select him and get into his character screen. You can see here we are at level 2. We'll pull up skills. Okay. So we have one skill point, and we can choose which skill we'd like to unlock. Uh, this one will unlock the gunner, shoots more accurately from the cannon and gun. In manual mode, the recoil stabilization increases. We could select focus. The officer traces enemy ships by UZO and periscopes 25% faster. Periscope is additionally stabilized in manual mode. If this was our skipper, and the way, and again, this is, this is particular to how I play. If this was the skipper, I would be taking option... To the UZO, uh, as I tend to only ever use my skipper on the UZO, and again, that's just my play style. If you tend to use your second officer, absolutely go for that UZO. I tend to use my second officer to operate the gun. So I'm going to go ahead and unlock that skill for him. That's really it. You just click it and it's done. Go ahead and exit. Okay, and we mouse over our discipline tab. We can see that we have a plus five per minute on our morale because of our vacation. So if we were to put to sea right now, get ourselves in a sticky situation in which morale is dropping quickly, we've got that plus five buffer. So at this point, we've kitted out the ship. Uh, we're loaded up on torpedoes, food, ammunition for the guns. Realistically, there's nothing much more we can do now except speak to the leading officer and get ourselves another patrol. Mr. Graf, if you can speak to the CO, please. And we'll look for some orders from the Admiralty. Okay, the objective here is traveling to sector DH, 2,000 kilometers inside, with an additional objective of 4,000 tons. And we will get a war correspondent. So Mr. Gunter Schneider will join you on board to write an article about your U-boat, make a good impression, and ensure his safety. We would gain an additional 5,000 budget and 150% more reputation by taking, uh, by taking on this task and performing it. So what would happen there, a war correspondent, a reporter, will be loaded on your ship, and he will ask you questions throughout your voyage. And if you answer those questions correctly, and it's very, very minimal stuff, it's, it's basic stuff about the boat, um, how do the Balax tanks work, what is this periscope for, etc. You go ahead and complete that, and it's, it's, it's easy money, right? There's no reason not to do that one. The shipping lanes in this particular sector are not fantastic. They're not terrible, as you do get convoys coming up the African coast. 
take a look at the next one in line, BD. We just came from there. This one's interesting. They would want us to travel to 2250 again and sink 7,000 tons. The experimental torpedoes. So they would load brand new prototype torpedoes, a T3 version. We only have access to T1 and T2. Would be loaded on our ship and we have to test them in action. So what that means is they're going to give you, I think it's something to the tune of five or six torpedoes. You have to score X amount of hits with those torpedoes. Not kills, they just have to be hits. The T3 is a fantastic torpedo. The added bonus to this is this will greatly increase your research speed when unlocking T3 in headquarters. So what you could do is take this mission, head back into your sub, unload or sell some of the torpedoes you have to make room for these T3s. AM is going to be a toughie. You need to travel 2,500 kilometers. We need to sink 10,000 tons, so a minimum, I would say, of eight ships, if not more. And uh, according to intelligence, foggy weather is expected in the area. Wow, that's a tough choice. These are all fairly good. Um, this first one is going to give us just basically free goodness. This second one is very, very tempting to unlock the T3s faster. The T3 is the sweet spot for torpedoes, in my opinion. But AM sounds like it could be a lot of fun. The shipping lanes in this area and this area tend to be fairly choked. You've got major bases located here, here, and in this area here. Uh, Scapa Flow is in this area. You've also got air bases nearby, so there is a much heightened possibility of aircraft. Uh, I'm very, very tempted to go with this one. So what I plan to do is leave it up to the community. I've, I've just been blown away with the support uh, that I've been getting on these videos. Uh, I really just started off with the basic idea that I wish there was uh, an instruction manual for this game. And uh, the feedback has been very heartening it's been fantastic um i'd like to engage you folks a little bit more so what i'd like to do is pose the question to the community post the question to the subs uh which of the patrols do you think we should do we have uh, dh and uh, a lot of free reputation we've got bd testing out those new torpedoes and the shipping lanes in bd are not terrible uh we stuck fairly south a little more north you tend to run into a lot more convoys and of course, you've got the danger zone here. Um, nothing's going to be a guarantee, unfortunately. The game is what it is. So, um, yeah. So again, I'm, I'm going to leave it up to you. Go ahead and hit me up in the comments down below. You'll find my Discord, Twitch, and Twitter pages linked down in the description below. Let's, uh, let's get some dialogue going. What do you think we should do? One, two, or three. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, end the video here. And I look forward to your replies. Consider hitting that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I've been Lightly Assaulted. Thanks for tuning in. Bye now.